Although it's been a while since my last video, I'm often asked how you can buy the DIY BMS. I started a shop but struggled to get a regular supply of stock, so it closed last year, and since then, the world has gone mad with import and export tariffs. The shop won't be opening anytime soon. Therefore, let me show you how you can order and build your own DIY BMS using the services from JLC PCB. For any configuration of DIY BMS, you will need a controller and one or more cell monitoring modules. For this video, we will be building a controller and the newest 16 cell monitoring board, which I call the All-in-One. This is the recommended setup for a 16 cell, 48 volt battery. You are going to need the construction files for how to build the circuit boards. These are all in GitHub at this location. Although there are a lot of folders, you don't need them all. Only controller circuit, module V490 all-in-one, and the temperature sensor. Let's start with the controller. Look inside the export folder. This is where all the automatically generated files are placed, and the zip file is the one required for JLC to understand what we are building. Download that file to your computer. You will also need these two CSV files, which indicate where the component parts are placed on the circuit board. Jump over to the JLC PCB website and click the Instant Quote button. This is where you need to upload the zip file. The website will process the file and show you some options. The smallest quantity you can order is five. You can leave the default settings for most options. I'd recommend swapping to lead free solder. And you can select any color board you wish. Now we need to tell them how to build the board, so switch on the assembly option. Again, you can leave the defaults. We need to assemble the top side of the board. You also have the option of only populating two boards to reduce the cost. Moving on, we get to see a preview of the board being manufactured. Assuming this looks good, we can continue. When we reach the Bill of Materials page, this is where you need to upload the two CSV files mentioned earlier, the BOM file and the CPL file. We are presented with a list of all the parts required to build our two boards, along with the total cost. On this page, it will also highlight if parts are out of stock. If they are, they won't be placed onto the circuit board and you would have to buy the part yourself and complete the soldering manually. If you don't have the skills to do this, then stop here and wait for parts to come back into stock. Now in the case of the controller board, the ESP32 and the TFT screen are not available, but this is okay as you will need to source those components from a different supplier. So let's continue on to the part placement, confirming that we don't want the two missing parts. There is usually some discrepancy between the online system and KiCad, which generated the build files, so accept the invitation to automatically align the parts. I try to make the files as perfect as possible, but JLC doesn't make this easy. They often appear to rotate components on a random basis. So on this page, we need to carefully rotate and visually check the parts. To rotate a part, Click on it and tap the spacebar. You can also drag the circuit board around the screen using the right mouse button. For the screw terminals, notice how the arrows indicate where the wire entry points are. These all need to be facing out from the board, otherwise you won't be able to insert the wires. You can also move the selected part using the arrow keys on your computer keyboard. We don't have to be super accurate to align these parts as they will be soldered on by a human and the part will only fit into the holes on the board. So now the board visually looks okay. It's time to check the orientation of the parts. This is very important to ensure the parts are not placed backwards, which could cause damage to the board or even release the magic smoke. You can see here that these relay chips are rotated incorrectly. So we can correct that like we did with the screw terminals. Zoom into the board and look for chips and parts with a dot on them to indicate the polarity. Usually on the silk screen of the board, I've placed a number one to indicate the orientation. This needs to align with the purple dot. 
On some parts, look for a plus symbol and make sure those are aligned with the markings on the board. For component D1, which is a multicolour LED, its pin 1 needs to be facing down and to the right, next to the line marking on the board. Finally, swap to 3D mode and look at the parts again. You may notice that we still have some screw terminals facing the wrong way, so select it and click the spacebar to rotate. You can micro-align the through-hole parts, but this isn't really required, because as I mentioned, those will be placed by a human, so don't need the same alignment as the automated parts. I would double check all the parts at this stage. You can't change them later, and if they are incorrect, the controller won't work. Now we can move to the next page and confirm the order. You will need to select the product description. I usually use development board. Now don't forget the price you see on screen is for two populated controller boards and three blank PCBs. Save that to the cart, and we can then add a second item to this order, which will keep the overall shipping costs down. Look in the module 490 folder and upload the Gerber zip file from the export folder. We will repeat the same process, keeping most of the defaults and enabling the automated assembly service. We upload the matching BOM and CPL files and once again presented with a list of the parts and their price. This is for two boards. There are a lot more components on the cell monitoring board and unfortunately one of them is out of stock. Now we can select an alternative for this part by clicking on the search option and matching the exact part description and footprint to the original. This isn't always possible, and if you select the wrong part, the circuit won't work or could release the magic smoke. So unless you are confident, use the original part number and wait for it to come back into stock. OK, on we go. We repeat once again the part alignment task. The cell monitor boards always appear to be more mixed up than the controller. We will also check the orientation of the parts Zoom in and look for the dots, positive symbols, and number ones. If you see a diode component, which will have a D prefix, its negative leg is aligned with the rectangle shape on the board. Polarized capacitors also need to be orientated correctly. A final check in 3D mode confirms the parts are correctly placed, and we can add this to the basket. Now, I'll quickly go through the temperature sensor board. There are only a couple of parts on this, so it's much quicker and lower cost. We have all three boards in our basket. You will often find multiple shipping options, some lower cost than others, and there is generally always a coupon available for nine or $10 off an order. I sometimes find that placing two or three separate orders can sometimes be lower cost depending on the shipping prices. This way you can also stack the coupons. Just a reminder that you may also be required to pay local import taxes and VAT when the item arrives in your local country. This is definitely true for the UK, and I think Europe as well. The shipping carrier often adds an administrative charge as well. Now you have a successful order of the circuit boards. Don't forget you will also need additional items like wires, terminal blocks, and the ESP32 board. So I hope you find this video informative, and allows you to join in the fun with the DIY BMS. Please consider supporting this project by subscribing to this YouTube channel.